Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on Toned In Entertainment, where we're talking all things pop culture. Today, it's time to continue with our comic book discussion of the WCW comic book. Now, this is issue number six of a 12-issue series, and this one is called Untitled, and it's got Cactus Jack right on the cover, and it looks like he's ready to bring some pain to Sting in this issue. Let's get on with the discussion. <laughs> Well, my wish didn't come true as right off the bat, we get another serving of Punch Fresh and his horrible rhymes as he goes toe to toe with Van Hammer. Outside of the ring, we have Jim Ross and Johnny B. Bag calling the action. Punch Fresh rocks Van Hammer with a big boot, but as he goes to punish him, he can't help but to rap about it. Sorry that your latest metal single was such a dismal flop, but that will seem like nothing to my crushing elbow drop. Man, have I been dissed. My crushing elbow drop has missed. With Punch Fresh missing the elbow drop, Van Hammer seeks the opportunity to not only hit Punch Fresh with a splash, but to spit bad rhymes of his own. Punch, your power's ample, but now you're gonna sample. The power of rock and roll is gonna take its toll. Van Hammer gets the win, and we're done with the bad raps, at least for this issue. At the announcing desk, Polly dangerously joins the party. Paul Lee blames Johnny B. Bad for sticking his feathers where they don't belong, and that because of his interference, it cost Rick Rude and the Dangerous Alliance the WCW title, and that Johnny B. Bad is now a marked man. Now there's an error here in this comic book, and if you follow the Steiner brothers at any point in their career, it's easy to spot. Paul Lee says he's gonna take the titles away from the muscle-bound Minnesota meatheads. Now we know the Steiners pride themselves from being from Michigan, not Minnesota. In the ring, we have Paulie's team of Beautiful Bobby and Double A Arn Anderson taking on the Steiner brothers. Scott has his hand in a cast from the beating he took last issue in the War Games. Even though Scott Steiner might not be 100%, that doesn't stop him and Rick from bringing the pain to Paulie's boys. Now the layout here in this issue is one of my favorites. It's across two pages, and you really feel like you're in the crowd as Scott Steiner slams Arn Anderson's head into the turnbuckle. Paul Lee loses his mind outside the ring. Rick Steiner has beautiful Bobby in the grass, and of course, there's a few little stingers out there enjoying the action. The chaos in the ring continues as the Dangerous Alliance focuses on Scott Steiner's arm, but Scott is having no part of it, sends Bobby Eaton flying, and tags in his brother. Eaton and Anderson attempt to take on the dog-faced gremlin, but are met with a clothesline. Now the announcer calls this move a DDT from the top, but it looks more like a spike pile driver that they land on double A and get the three count. We now go backstage as Missy Hyatt interviews Cactus Jack. Cactus says he's out for revenge on Sting for humiliating him on the Bruise Cruise. Also backstage, Johnny B. Bad is interviewing the Stinger. Sting says that the little Stingers have been pleading with him to bring back the WCW title, and that's what he's gonna do. Inside the ring, Cactus Jack gives his staple bang bang as he awaits Sting's arrival down the ring. Jim Ross questions Paulie dangerously where Johnny B. Bad is as he never returned to ringside after his interview with Sting. Paulie hints that he might know something as he says that Alaska is really nice this time of year. The brawl in the ring between Cactus and the Stinger begins. Cactus tells Sting that he needs to be afraid as he's ready to hand out a beating to the Stinger for all the time he had to stay at home being suspended. The two brawl back and forth with Cactus Jack telling Sting he's gonna break his arm. Sting tells Jack he couldn't break an egg. Paul E says how great the day is and that Cactus is gonna take care of Sting and they don't have to put up with Johnny B. Bad as well. Jim Ross demands he says what has happened to Johnny B. Bad. Paul E replies, who cares? Back in the ring, Jack whips Sting into the corner and charges at him like a bull. But Sting moves, and Jack is now woozy in the corner. Sting sees the opportunity to attempt the Stinger splash, but Jack catches him and tosses him out of the ring. Jack heads out of the ring and begins to put a hurting on the Stinger. Paul E says that he hears that Johnny B. Bad was spotted at the snack bar. JR asks, what was he eating? Paul e jokes, baked Alaska. JR reminds Paul e that kidnapping is a federal offense. Cactus tosses Sting back into the ring. Mrs. Foley's baby boy attempts a splash from the top rope and misses. Sting now sees a key opportunity and puts Jack into the Scorpion Deathlock. Just as Sting thinks he has the match wrapped up, Rick Rude makes his way down the ringside. Sting yells out that Rude has a lot of nerve, showing his face. The distraction of the Ravishing One was just enough for Cactus to make a comeback. With a quick grab of the tights, he rolls Sting up, but only gets a two count. Sting is able to turn the tables, 
whips Jack into the corner and nails Cactus this time with a stinger splash. Rude tries to interfere, but Sting sends him flying with a powerful right. Sting quickly makes his move, covers Jack, and gets the one, two, three, finally in possession of the WCW Championship. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for issue number six of the WCW comic book. You know, Sting has finally brought back the WCW world title. You know, he's had to go through a lot of hoops and hurdles in the first six issues. But you know what? At the end of the day, the Stinger always gets it done. All right, guys, make sure you subscribe here to Tone In Entertainment because coming up next is issue number seven. And we've got Ron Simmons on the cover. So, guys, make sure you subscribe here to Tone In Entertainment for that video and for all things pop culture subscribe to the channel do it go now do it now